Hey guys, good morning. This is Dan. Welcome to my channel, Angle Guys. For those of you that are new, uh, welcome. For those of you that are returning, welcome back. For those of you that support me over on Patreon, thank you so very much. Sorry about last night's live broadcast. It kind of like took a dive. I don't know if it's my internet or my uh, streaming platform. I've got to sort of sort this out. I feel like it's my internet. It's been going on ever since COVID started when I'm on in the evening. So I'm sorry that the video split and we weren't able to get many readings out. Uh, for those of you that are new, this is a daily forecast that applies um, not only to the day that we're doing it for, which would be July 11, Saturday, but also you can utilize this at any point in time. Um, it's a message for the highest good of the greater collective. So if this reaches you on a date that's not July 11th, don't necessarily turn it off. There could be a message in here for you that applies or something you might want to focus on. This is sort of like the energetic forecast for the day, for the greater good of everybody. Um, so it may give you insight. It might not fully apply to you on the day that you watch it, but it may come in handy later. So take what you want and leave the rest of the day. If you want to support me, you can certainly go over to patreon.com and get a subscription. Um, you get the forecast a day early at the lowest subscription amount. Um, there's other readings over there that are available, specifically over there for different subscription levels. You can vote on the decks that I use, things like that. You can also follow my Instagram at angleguys333. And um, you can book a private reading if you'd like through my Facebook business page. Send me any questions there. Please like and follow my uh, business page and also my YouTube channel. Hit the notification bell so you do get notified when I do go live. Um, and hopefully I will get my internet sussed out, so, because this is just been going on for too long. And it's a bummer because I like to do lives in the evening. So, it seems that's when I start dropping. So, we'll figure it out, though. Bear with me. Alright, let's see what's going on for the 11th. Five of Swords. Five of Swords is usually kind of competition energy, right? It's sort of that, um, to me, it's, uh, it's not necessarily, it's more annoying than anything. <laughs> we do have that devil energy underneath, which would make sense why we have this Five of Swords. I'm going to shut the door because I can hear the cat acting up. One second. We have that devil energy underlying, uh, this Five of Swords, which could speak to the sort of annoyingness uh, of this card. Five of Swords is always like this sort of clash of, um, I wouldn't even call it clash of the titans, but to me it's just sort of this clash of ideas, generally maybe other people's opinions, a lot of different ideas being served up to us. That's certainly what I'm feeling here. The lack of color in this card makes me feel a little bit meh, like some of you might feel like you're, um, struggling a bit with those around you and their perceptions of things, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be that their perceptions are the truth, but their perceptions are probably causing some some level of strain on, on whatever, however it is you're thinking, feeling, that sort of a thing. That's the gray nature of this card. I do want to say that this worm being cut in half is not the most pleasant image, but what I do like about it is that when you cut a worm in half, it can kind of like regrow itself. And so to me, it feels like whatever we're dealing with is, is really, if we really ultimately look at it, it's temporary that whatever sort of conflicting opinions or competitive ideas or annoyances we may be facing in our, in our mind or in our mental space that we're thinking about reflecting upon or engaging in, I feel like this cut worm speaks to this idea that these things won't necessarily be around for long, that we can hopefully learn from them and grow from them, that we can uh, change them in some way, so, or change ourselves in some way, so that we grow beyond whatever it is that we're sort of maybe struggling against or fighting with here. 
this definitely speaks to that also that devil energy like when i was saying the devil kind of teaches us to look at stuff that we don't really want to or forces us to sort of deal with some of the the um ways that either we or those around us not only get in our way but um sort of get the best of us if that makes any sense right so like if there's something that we're doing that's not serving our highest good or there's something that somebody around us is doing that's not serving our highest good it's going to become sort of blatantly obvious with this five of swords energy it does feel like the obviousness of it is going to take its toll um it's certainly men mentally we may not be able to let go of say uh, our frustration around a person or situation that we feel like we are maybe colliding with or um uh, that is our, in our environment that is not sort of agreeing with us, right? I do love, there's all of these swords going in different directions, <laughs> which says to me, <clears throat> some of you may not be very sure-footed in how to step or what thought to have to move forward, but this one sword here that cuts through the center, that sort of cuts this worm in half, feels rather decisive. So it speaks to this idea that there might be some sort of change coming about within you or within the situation that is going to require you to make that change. Changes, you know, change and transformation can kind of also be associated with the number five, the three and five of swords. A choice will need to be made or some sort of uh, clarity will need to be uh, achieved through this center sword, where it just kind of cuts you to the quick or, um, you know, cuts you free from a situation uh, or a person. Um, this situation, if you are cutting free from it, it might feel like a loss. That's the worm being cut in half. But ultimately, the worm doesn't die, right? Like, ultimately, the worm can kind of re-sprout and regrow and regenerate. And then we actually have two worms. I don't want to say that that means that your problem is going to um, double. What I mean is, is that you know, what may appear like the end or frustrating and annoying and all of that, and we can't escape it. We actually can, and we could probably escape it uh, and be better for it. Or, I don't know if escape is the right word, because that gives this idea of fleeing, but do you know what I'm saying? It's this idea of sort of conquering it or getting beyond it in some way, okay? So don't be surprised if you guys are feeling challenged slightly um, on this day especially with that devil energy underneath. Remember that seeking of peace is what we're looking for from that grounding stone from Sunday. So let's see what the animal spirit card is. And I will read the, uh, <coughs> the meanings of these. All right, so this card is an interesting card. This showed up in, shit, I, I want to say, was it Virgo? I can't remember. It was in one of the monthly readings as the spirit guide for a sign. Oh, I can't remember which sign it was now at this point, but it's for July. And it's interesting because this week we also have the Sagittarian, um, at the beginning of the week was unicorn carrying us through. Okay. And that's that spirit animal, that animal of spirit. Well, we're back here with this element of spirit. That's the circle at the top. The black egg to me, I mean, eggs always sort of represent rebirth, new ideas, changes, opportunities, um, uh, something on the horizon, right, that hasn't yet come quite into being. When I look at this Five of Swords energy and the collision that's happening there and the grayness that's happening there, right, this sort of uninspired feeling or this feeling of, you know, maybe even depression, anxiety, whatever's going on there, right? As we cut ourselves free <clears throat> from that, we actually open ourselves up to this idea of spirit or this black egg. I can't fully remember. I know that I read the definition of the black egg, but we'll have to reread it again. To me, when I, this color of purple around it speaks to this idea of spirit, it's also a spirit card. It being the black egg is kind of like maybe going into the darker side of things and finding the treasures that lay within. This egg also makes me think with the design outside of it or these crisscrossing lines, it makes me think of sort of like a Fabergé egg in the sense that where it's like this sort of intricate, intricately woven um, uh, gift in a way, right? So we might have to dig deeper within ourselves. And this is some of that devil energy too. I feel like the devil challenges us to find the egg in the dark or the black egg, right? The egg that has like sort of the rebirth in it or the opportunity to sort of cut free 
Do you see what I'm saying here, guys? I hope you understand this. I hope I don't sound like a total loon. I don't think I sound like a loon. I understand what I mean. I just hope that you guys understand what I mean. This black egg is in the recesses of our minds, our hearts, our darker shadow selves, whoever it is that we don't want to see, whatever it is we don't want to look at. But there's, to me, I feel like it's in there, deep in the recesses, and it's something to be um, valued. It's something to be looked at, held, um, nurtured, you know, the idea of egg is also this idea of new life, right? So when we find this egg or this um, aspect of self within it, with, within deep within ourselves, and we bring it forward and we nurture it, we don't necessarily have to like put it all out there, right? But we, we want to acknowledge it from a place of spirit. We want to uh, grow it, value it, um, creation comes from here is my feeling an opportunity to sort of transform something that maybe uh doesn't work for us or that we don't want any longer um but we have to be willing to look at it and that's that energy of the devil underneath and i think that some of these these two cards here as we look at these things and we start to make these assessments or changes which is that five energy in this five of swords here um we start to get ourselves closer to that stone of peace, right? That grounding stone of peace, right? I like that we begin off the week with the unicorn and then we end with the black egg, which to me speaks to this idea of spirit has kind of been with us through this entirety of this week, right? Because that unicorn energy never really left us. It was sort of what carries us through the week. And it's bringing us to this treasure that we may not understand as a treasure, and the sooner we sort of get in line with that or get clear on that or start to view it as a treasure, only then can we sort of like maybe release it, um, free ourselves from it, accept it, and allow it to sort of crack open and show us whatever it was we needed to know. Does that make sense? Let me read these um, definitions really quick. So black egg. Oh, I'll do Black Egg second. Sorry, I've got it open, but I will find it. I can't remember. Because she has the Golden Egg and the Black Egg. So let me read the Five of Swords first. So the Five of Swords is self-destruction. Oh shit, bitch. <laughs> Excuse me. Yet another card of warning. The Five of Swords depicts the destruction of the self. You'll be lured into another situation or argument you know to avoid. You, you know to avoid. Your selfishness and desire for power will lead you to defeat, pain, and discord will result. Well, damn. That's not very nice. I don't get that much seriousness from this card. To me, when I look at this card, I sense this sort of heaviness. I sense this sort of frustration, the lines going through the back of the card up and down. The gray of the card speaks to this idea of he that heaviness or that depression uh, and that frustration. Uh, I think that that sword through the center cutting that worm in half, yes, that it leads to our own destruction, but I also see that from that sort of, if we're able to sort of successfully release the situation or release ourselves from said situation and stand true in what it is that we know to be true, we can sort of regrow that worm, right? So it doesn't seem like it's the end, even though it may feel like the end. It might be painful, right? So I think that's a pretty dire um, Five of Swords meaning, but that is what the artist put in here. So I'm going to put that in there for some of you. I don't know. I hope it's not that dire. To me, it just feels like um, we're seeking that clarity and we're having to address some stuff that we may not want to deal with and that causes us frustration. Now, let me look at the black egg. The black egg says, speaking from an authentic voice, the truth. Okay, this would be the antithesis to this five of swords. The black egg, egg contains one of life's essential treasures, the truth. Inside of it resides no confusion, excuses, small talk, noise, or lies, not even white ones. This living and breathing vessel harbors only that which rings true. When this essence is in balance, we speak slowly and clearly. We are drawn to activities like writing, reading, teaching, singing, or perhaps public speaking. Sounds draw us in, books draw us in, the concept of truth itself draws us in. We start asking questions like, what do I know to be true about myself? And what is true about the world? 
When the energy of the black egg is not yet accessed, we speak from an unsure place. We say things others want to hear, gossip, or repeat stories to justify our subpar behavior. We might even try to convince ourselves that we have no inner truth at all. The energy of the black egg hovers and waits for us to reconnect. It is available at every moment, in every situation. It is the epicenter of truth, the birthplace of our voice. So it says here the black egg and the fifth chakra, which would be your throat chakra, guys. The subtle essence of this card resides at the base of the throat, at the Vishuddha chakra. The ancient sages saw this center as the hub that governs our speech and expression. Vishuddha translates as especially pure. The balance of this center is important for all of us, but is especially essential for writers, editors, musicians, and teachers. So I think that there's definitely some truth that's coming to light for you guys today. I hope that that's the case, and I hope that you guys can express it, at least to yourselves. Um, I feel like this expression and this truth is coming from a place of spirit. And the blackness or the bleakness of the five and then the black egg says to me that it might come, it might, the truth might come at a, at a small cost or at a cost that sort of, you know, we might be a little bit uncomfortable with dealing with. But I think that the spirit of the black egg speaks to this strength that resides deep within us that we need to call upon as we access this truth and act from this truth. This truth may not be popular with others. But I feel like this truth is going to bring us about the peace that we need. Let's look at the grounding stone for the day. What is the energy we need to ground in during this time? Oh, okay. And it's courage. So that courage to speak our truth is definitely key in all of this. And everything's falling over. I'm moving stuff around. Sorry, guys. So, to me, this is the courage to speak our truth, to know our truth, to live from our truth, to dig through the depths of our spirit, to find that truth, to get in touch with it, to reconnect to it, and then to sort of express it, even if it's just to ourselves. But once we express it to ourselves, we set out that vibration, right? And it does take courage to be honest with ourselves, right? Where, where do we need to sort of make those choices and changes to free ourselves mentally? Where may, may, where may we need to cut ourselves free from situations that are dragging us down or giving us, you know, undesired results? Does that make sense? Remember, the devil's underneath all of this, so that's also the courage that we have to face, too, is that sort of unknown, or if I do this, how does that change? What will people think of me? All of those questions come into play in this reading. I hope that you guys will find this. I do have, I, I feel like this grounding in the courage, if you're successful in doing that, this black egg, there's gifts to be found here in this truth, in this personal truth of the spirit. They're just not sort of like readily seen because I feel like it brings us to this uh, place of sort of discomfort. But you have to trust it. That's my uh, feeling there with that courage stone. I hope this reading helps you guys. This is your forecast for the day. Um, Please go easy on yourself as best you can. Be good to yourself throughout the day. And um, I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. We start a new week and we'll be looking at the energy then. And um, hopefully you guys do find your truth today. All right. I love you. Take care. Bye-bye.